Hello, everybody. If you are new to Shape It Up, welcome. And if you're a regular, thank you so much for continuing to listen. And if you're loving this podcast, I want to hear about it. Click the subscribe button and leave a review. By leaving a review, you're not just helping boost this podcast so it's shown to more people, but you could be helping someone else who's struggling with weight loss. Because the higher in rankings this podcast gets, the more people will see it. So thank you in advance for leaving your review. And before we dive into today's topic on Thanksgiving leftovers, I want to share a review with you. So the review comes in from Nicole H. from Philly. She says, amazing information, Nicole. Thanks for keeping us informed with ways to make eating and staying healthier easier. I love that you offer quick tips every day to keep us motivated. So thank you, Nicole, so much for leaving a review. And I am so glad that the, tip, the tips have been really helpful for you. Okay, so on to today's topic, which is Thanksgiving leftovers. So I like to cook an abundance of food because then I don't have to cook for like the next three or four days. Though my kids are kind of entering the massive growth phase, so it might be more like two days right now. Like my son, he grew like six inches in one year. So craziness. But for Thanksgiving, I made way more food than I needed for the actual turkey day. So this year we celebrated with ourselves, just my husband, myself, and my two kids. So we had plenty. So first let's start with what you think about these leftovers. Do you think you have to eat them all before they go bad? Do you think of ways to get them out of the house because you feel you have no control and you will eat it all? Maybe a better question is, is how do you want to think about the leftovers? These are questions you can mull over and I'm going to tell you what I do with my leftovers. So the obvious one is we just graze on whatever's in the fridge, right? We bag it up and put it in the fridge. And I let my family decide what they want and they reheat it. It's very simple. I love this process because I don't have to cook anything. They can fend for themselves. But now it's been a few days and this is where I start to decide what I'm going to keep in the fridge and what I'm going to freeze. So I tend to start with the desserts and I will portion them out and freeze them. Portioning the desserts will eliminate the need to thaw an entire pie if you only want one piece. Therefore, you're not going to be as tempted to eat the rest of the thawed pie. Depending on what you're freezing will determine how you prepare it for the freezer. So meaning I tend to use wax paper to portion things out. Again, depending on what you're portioning, you can't exactly portion gravy into a wax paper. <laughs> I guess you could if you laid it out flat. But So if the food needs to freeze a bit before it gets packed, so say like pumpkin pie, if you have individual serving sizes of the pumpkin pie, I'll wrap it in wax paper and then I put them in a tray to put them in the freezer for about one to two hours just so they get a little bit more solid. And then about after two hours, I will put them in a freezer bag. This is so you don't get one big mushed pie when you bag them up separately into portions. If you haven't grabbed a copy of my No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook, I go into a lot more detail about how to do this in the book. Um, you can purchase the cookbook on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. If you want the bonuses that come with the book, go to shapeitupfitness.com slash smoothie and you can grab those there. So I will continue to freeze everything I don't think will be eaten in the next couple days. So that doesn't just include desserts, it includes turkey, includes gravy, mashed potatoes, whatever we're having. So pretty much everything can be frozen. There were, have only been a few things that I've ever frozen in general that have not held well. Um, so if you don't wanna freeze the leftovers and you just want them out of the house so you aren't tempted, we need to chat. This is the mindset work I work on with my clients. So food is never controlling you. If you decide to take the food out of the house, you can drop it off to a neighbor, a family member, or a college student. Just make sure it's someone that you know, right? <laughs> Don't just randomly give, I guess you could give strangers your food, but anyway, different topic. If you are struggling with having the food in your house because you have strong cravings to eat them, seriously, we need to talk. 
I was like this too. And it was very frustrating for me to have these cravings and to feel so incredibly out of control. I overcame my cravings with five simple steps that I use and I can help you do it too. So if you're interested in scheduling your complimentary consult so you can gain control back in your life and so food is not controlling you, go to shapeitupfitness.com slash chat. So I'm gonna be continuing all through December, so hang with me for the next month at least, with daily holiday tips. And so make sure you hit subscribe or get on my email list so you'll know when the next episode is out. Have a beautiful day and I will talk to you tomorrow.